Shalom. We're in Parasha Re'e, that means to see. Now Re'e is the Hebrew letters Resh. Um, what is it now? <laughs> Resh Aleph Hay. And it contains the letter, no, it's the letter Aleph. And the letter Aleph is the letter that connects to Yahweh. So what the purpose of Re'e is, is to see Yahweh and to get a revelation of Yahweh. Now if we step back and just ask ourselves, why do I study the Torah? Why do I read the Bible? Why do I believe in God? Now, most of the time, it will be a selfish motive because we are creatures that want to satisfy the imbalance we want to bring it back into balance if you're hungry you eat if you have an itch you scratch if you're tired you sleep we are slaves of our needs and the prompts that makes us uncomfortable so Yahweh wants us to step out of that into a more um, a willingness or a choice to do something that is not satisfying something that I need or to take care of something that makes me uncomfortable and that is the mature level of studying the scriptures it's not to say oh I've got a need I need to figure out how to pray I need to figure out how this works so I can get out of it I need to make sure that I'm safe so I'm going to study the word and find out everything I need to do to be in the comfort and the protection of Yahweh yeah all of that is noble yeah, all of that is good and it's probably okay if you do that but the motive is always for yourself the reason for doing that is to satisfy the self now Yahweh wants us to do things that satisfy him because I think it was last week or the week before we saw in one of the Gemachas that he is our owner we belong to him we were have been redeemed by the blood of Mashiach so we have been bought and we belong to him we're not our own possession anymore so everything that we do we should do uh, for him and that's what the concept of a bond servant is all about you serve him because you love your master that's the first and foremost reason and our master is Yote Vave the owner of the vineyard who is the father and we are, have, to, have to do everything in our, in our power to do what he asks us to do and also to find out who he is. I think that's the, the, the motive from Yahweh. He hides himself in order so we can find him. And to find him is to know who he is. Now his character has been written down in the Torah. All the commandments are things that he approve of or disapprove of likes and dislikes that makes your make up your personality your likes and your dislikes define who you are i like fish i like this i like red i like blue whatever it defines you you are different and you are made in a different way in the same way yahweh the creator has got preferences things that he likes things that he despises things that are in line with his character things that are opposing to his character and if we study the torah we should learn his character and then the next thing is we should imitate him and become like he is that should be your second motive is to conform to his ways and that is so that you can live in the same house so the, the bond servant had the privilege of living in the house of the master. Now can you imagine if you're an Eskimo with your cloak and your leather stuff and warm clothes and you go and live in the middle of the outback in Cooper PD in South Australia. Very hot. Now you want to stick to your culture. You still want to wear the things that you wore when you were, uh, uh, were fishing through ice. It's not practical. It doesn't make sense. In the same way, when you move into the household of Yahweh, you need to unlearn your ways, unlearn your culture, unlearn your religion, unlearn the way you think about Yahweh. Because all those things have been revealed to us through 
the doctrines of man throughout the years. And the longer we're down the line from the first coming of Messiah, the more, the further away we are from the truth. Because the first century church, they had a very good understanding of who Yahweh was through Yeshua, whom they actually walked and talked with. We're 2,000 years apart. And we've got some idea, we read what Paul said in Greek, which is a literal language that's descriptive, not a verbal or a, 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 a root a, a action language. They describe you what to do. So we've got no idea. We've got little hints. Your best chance to find out what the character of Yahweh is, the Aleph, within rare, is to study the Torah. Because that's where his character is in its purest form. Specifically from the beginning, the book of Bereshit. That's the book that is the closest to who Yahweh was. Right at the beginning, before we existed. That's the purest form. And I, and, and I think that should be our motive when we start the cycle again with Bereshit. Let's find Yahweh in the creation. And that will reveal or re'e who he is to us. The other thing I want to touch on this morning is what I've been working on um, earlier today is the word Shechem. Now Shechem is related to Mount Ebal and Mount Kerazim, two mountains, one of blessing, one of curses, um, that basically reveal the mirror image of Mount Sinai as depicted by Mount Thorn and Mount Sword, which is Sinai, which is Thorn, um, and Mount Cherev, which is Mount Sword. Now Shechem is right in the middle, and Shechem means shoulder. Now if you look at the mount, it looks like two shoulders, but the head is missing. Now when the Levites, when, when Yahweh instructed Moses to set up six on this mountain, six on that, the Levites were right in the middle with the Ark of the Covenant. And that is the head. The head is the presence of Yahweh as facilitated by his priesthood as symbolized by the Ark of the Covenant and the contents thereof which are the two tablets, the rod of Aaron and the bowl of manna. So that is the head and the symbolism of who Yahweh is. And if you look at the Ark, it looks like a seat with the angels. The angels didn't bow over the the ark, they've got two wings forward, two wings up, two wings to the back, that make the back of the seat, um, the two armrests of the seat, and the two posts showing up on, on the side, six wings each, and that make the seat in which the king um, is seated symbolically, and that is basically the scene of um, Yahweh speaking to his people, and the last generation specifically, as well as the new generation that is to come after the Great Tribulation, or the people that come out of the Great Tribulation as new believers in Mashiach, and also as a result of the wine press or the seventh millennium. And we're going to dig deep um, this Torah portion in looking at the wine press, a few interesting things, and just go over that and the symbolic uh, pictures and the symbolism thereof. So. I'm going to leave you with that and I hope you have a blessed day and I'll speak to you soon. Shalom.